It's time for this week's episode of Brandon Sports Talk, featuring in-depth interviews from those who are trending in the world of athletics. And now, here's the host of Brandon Sports Talk, Brandon Pate. Welcome back to Brandon Sports Talk. In today's episode, I have the privilege to interview the Pooling Tart podcast, the owner of Bobby Kuhn. How are you doing today? I'm doing pretty well. How about yourself, Brandon? I'm doing good. Can you talk about how you knew that you wanted to start a sports talk podcast? Yeah. Uh, so I actually worked in minor league baseball for eight years. Um, so that was... Um, you know, most of my life, my professional life at this point, uh, I worked for the Williamsport Crosscutters, who at the time were a Philadelphia Phillies affiliate. Um, that's my hometown is Williamsport, Pennsylvania. And then I went and moved to Wisconsin and I worked for the Beloit Snappers, who at the time were an Oakland Athletics affiliate. And then I moved to Salisbury, Maryland and worked for the Delmarva Shorebirds, who are a Baltimore Orioles affiliate. Um, and so I was entertaining the idea of getting out of baseball. Um, I'm not sure. It sounds like you've had a couple of other people that work in minor league baseball on uh, your show here. Um, but the industry as a whole, nobody works in minor league baseball to get rich. Um, and the hours are very strenuous, um, especially when you have a loved one or family. Um, so I was entertaining the idea of getting out of minor league baseball because of those reasons. And I just kind of thought to myself, you know, if somebody could really get an insight as to what goes on behind the scenes, because, um, there are so many times when fans will say, oh, what do you do during the off season? It, you know, they, they think that you just don't work, you know? And so I wanted to address that question and just um, have a platform for people that work behind the scenes in minor league baseball um, who work so hard to, to give the game of, you know, professional baseball to their communities. Um, and there's so many stories behind every behind every team and every person um and so i knew that i knew a lot of people in the industry and i figured that those people would know people um and it's just kind of snowballed from there so that's what made me actually really want to start it how did you know that you wanted to focus on working in sports well just because of my experience over the last eight years um i just knew like you, you spend most of your life at the ballpark, especially during the summer. And I just knew that there was a ton of stories um, and each organization does things differently. Um, and there's just so many great people that work in minor league baseball. And I just wanted to have a platform for, for them to, to share their experiences. How did you come up with the name of your podcast, Pooling Tarp Podcast? Yeah, so um, Pooling Tarp is the number one thing, you know, if you had to, if you ask somebody that works in minor league baseball and say, you know, what is the epitome of working in minor league baseball? And they would say, Oh, pulling the, pulling the tarp for sure. So um, that's, a, that is one of the things you got to stop everything you're doing. It doesn't matter what you're doing. You have to stop change clothes and run out to the field um, sometimes it's 7 a.m. Sometimes I've done it as late as 1.30 a.m. So, um, you know, that's just, you know, kind of the epitome of working in minor league baseball. When it comes to your podcast, do you mainly only talk with minor league baseball pl people or do you focus on other minor leagues like basketball or football? 
Uh, usually I stick with folks that work in minor league baseball. I've had at least one person I know that, that worked in major league baseball. Um, and then there was, um, I've had somebody on, he actually runs a website and it's actually, um, kind of a thesaurus, um, or a reference of, all teams and leagues of of sports like all over the world that cease to exist and um that is actually called uh fun while it lasted so um i had that gentleman come on my show um but yeah most of the time i stick to people that work in minor league baseball who are some of the people that you have interviewed oh boy uh let me pull that i have my list right here um Man, I, I we are sixty four episodes in, so um, a lot of the people are my are my friends or friends of friends. But uh, let me see here. Um, I've had Kurt Bloom on my show, um, and so he is the radio broadcaster for the Birmingham Barons and was the radio broadcaster when Michael Jordan came. Um, you know, through the minors um, when he played double A and took that break from, from basketball. So I interviewed him right around um, the last dance, you know, the last dance documentary. Um, who else have I had? Um, I've had Ben Hill, who is actually employed by major league baseball. And he's a, he is the official minor league um, blogger for major league baseball and he travels around and he gets to try all the food and see all the promotions. Um, so I've had him on, um, one of, uh, you know, the best guests I would say, um, is Quint Studer who he actually is the new owner, uh, um, of the Beloit snappers the team that I used to work for in Wisconsin and he has worked tirelessly and endlessly to get them a brand new stadium that will be debuting this year. Um, so that's always exciting. Um, so Quint Studer was awesome. Um, and then one of, um, you know, the people who I look up to the most, um, his name's Gabe Sinecropi, and he is the vice president of the Williamsport Crosscutters, and he's been nominated for so many different awards and um, stuff like that um, as far as promotions go in minor league baseball. Um, so those are just a few of, you know, some of the great guests that I've had. But like I said, we're 64 episodes in, and they're all different. And they're all fantastic, honestly. So, have you interviewed any Nashville Sound or Winston Dash people? I have. Uh, so, I interviewed Jessica Aveyard from the Winston Salem Dash. I'm actually wearing a Winston Salem Dash shirt right now, man. Um, shout out to Jessica Aveyard for sending that to me. Um, she was fantastic. Um, just full of life in that episode. Um, and then as far as the Nashville sounds go, I interviewed Taylor Fisher, who is their director of sales. Um, so that's also a great episode. Who are some of your future guests that you plan on having on? Ooh, honestly, I kind of just play it week by week, man. Um, I just kind of work with everybody's schedules and, and see when would be a good time for them to, you know, hop on. Um, I know, I know who's going to be on it this week. Um, but you said that this won't come out until, um, you know, a couple months from now, uh, Jesse Goldberg Strassler, the uh, radio broadcaster and media relations guy for the Lansing lug nuts is going to be on this upcoming week. So that'll come out this Thursday. Um, but I, I really just, um, I'm on Twitter a lot, honestly. And so like, if I see somebody engage with one of my tweets or one of my friends tweets um, and they work in minor league baseball, I'll just kind of slide in their DMS and just see if they have some time coming up within the next couple of weeks. Um, so yeah, I don't have any real 
plans upcoming, but um, always they're they're going to be good. I know that much. <laughs> Now, for me, I used the website of the minor league baseball. Do you use the website of the minor league baseball a lot to get some of your guests on? I haven't as of yet, but I think I may have to. Um, you and I talked about this a little bit before we started recording, but um, so I started the Pulling Tart podcast in February of 2020, and I've never actually had to work around team schedules because of the 2020 season being canceled. So um, I am sure that I'm going to have to look at team schedules now. And because the minor league baseball season is finally, finally opening up tomorrow, we're filming that, you know, we're filming this on May 3rd uh, opening day is May 4th. Um, so I will have to look at um, team schedules and see if I can get somebody, you know, from their front office if the time allows. Of course, whenever you talk about minor leagues opening up, do you also do regular podcast episodes or is it just interview style? Uh, usually, well, yeah, they've all been interview style so far. Um, every once in a while, I know um, one of my guests he was a big fan of sports comedy movies. So we did, we did kind of a, um, like a draft of sports comedies. So I let him go first. And then, so we just did like a top five draft as far as that went. Um, but yeah, they're pretty much all interview styles. What is something that you learned now that you didn't know before starting a podcast? Just that... Um, it's more work than you think. Um, and I'm sure, I don't know if this is the case for you. Um, I knew that I was going to have more time, um, after I left baseball. Um, I told you, you know, the, the hours were, were kind of brutal as far as the season goes and that kind of stuff. Um, so I, I just knew I was going to have more time and my wife is a nurse. So, she works night shifts and all that. So it kind of just leaves me to my, to my own devices. Um, but so, so I've had people come on as guests on my podcast. And then a couple of weeks later, they started their own podcast, you know? Um, and you know, that, that kind of irked me a little bit because in their mind, they think, Oh, this seems pretty fun. You know, like I can, I can do this and their podcast will last four or five, six episodes. And then you never hear about it ever again uh, because, because they do not record anymore. So I just, just, just that you have to take time to come up with the questions you have to, um, you know, work with people's schedules, obviously, you know, if you're interviewing somebody else, you have to edit, you have to upload, you have to write the description out. Um, it's, it's, you know, not that I'm complaining at all. Um, I love doing it, but um, because, you know, I, I feel like I'm putting out quality content, but that's what I realize is that not everybody um, is, you know, used to the work that's being, in, that's being involved. Um, so it, it does take some work, but um, if you're putting out quality content and you have a great audience, then, then it's all worth it. When it comes to your interviews, do you typically go in the GM route of minor league baseball, or do you normally do like anybody, like maybe like, I know you said that you interviewed Amanda, who is in the social media side oh um jessica yeah, yeah jessica um yeah so i've you know there no no discrimination from from my podcast i've interviewed radio broadcasters i've interviewed groundskeepers um i've interviewed media relations people um ticket sales people sponsorship sales people um, assistant general managers, general managers. Um, I've, yeah, I mean, just so many different, I've interviewed official scorers. Um, 
stadium operations guys, um, other bloggers, other podcasters. Um, there's a, there's a guy that's an on-field MC, and he also sells peanuts. Um, you know when he's not on the field, um, just you know tons, no discrimination. So anybody that works in minor league baseball is welcome to come on to the Pulling Tart Podcast. What are some of your future plans with the Pulling Tart Podcast? Ooh, I don't know, man. Um, I usually just take it week by week, but. I would love to have some merchandise at some point. Um, maybe, maybe go the YouTube route like, like you. Um, but, but yeah, I'm, I'm just pumping out content every week. Um, just, you know, audio obviously, but, um, but yeah, that maybe, maybe I'll, I'll go a different route here, you know, with the merchandise or, or YouTube of some sorts. What advice would you give upcoming future sports podcasts and sports podcasts looking to interview professional people? Ooh. Um, I would, I guess just as far as hosting a, a podcast, just putting out content on a regular schedule, honestly. Um, if you, when you start it, you need to say, okay, I'm going to put out, content every Thursday morning or you know something like that like I you said that you come out with content every day um, mine personally comes out every Thursday morning at 6 a.m eastern um, so I that that would be my number one thing um, just so that people you know can get on that same schedule with you so that they can look forward to to something every every week or every day or even if you do it monthly you know something like that um just being on a regular schedule i would say where can my listeners find your podcast at on social media and podcast platforms ooh so the podcast can be found on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, um, really anywhere that you listen to podcasts, honestly. Um, there are some platforms that I didn't even know um, that really existed, um, but you can follow me on Twitter, um, and that's at It's R.A. Kuhn, uh, so that's I-T-S-R-A-C-O-O-N. Um, I'm also on Instagram, um, and my handle on there is R A Coon five four. So that's R A C O O N five four. Um, and I also post on LinkedIn, and you can just search for me there, Bobby Coon C O O N. Um, but yeah, that's what that's where you can find me in the Pulling Tart Podcast. Thank you again for your interview, and best of luck with your with your podcast, the Pulling Tart Podcast. Thank you so much, Brandon. Really appreciate you having me on and uh, best of luck with, with your podcast as well. Thank you. You can find Brandon Sports Talk on Facebook at Brandon Sports Talk, Instagram at Brandon Sports Talk, Twitter at Talk underscore Brandon. And you can find me on YouTube at Brandon Sports Talk. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Thank you again for your interview and best of luck. You've been watching Brandon Sports Talk. Please feel free to like, Share and subscribe to Brandon Sports Talk on social media and on YouTube.